Hello everyone, this is a revision video looking specifically at price fixing within a cartel. Um, what I'm going to look at only in this video is the drawing of the diagram to show the impact of firms price fixing. Uh, individual firms inside a cartel, how is the price set and how then do firms take that and the impact that can have on uh, profits. So I would encourage you to use this diagram if you're writing an essay about collusion or uh, you were looking at the impact of price fixing within cartels. So on my diagram to the left hand side, I'm going to look at the industry. Now, this is what we often call the complex monopoly, because you will remember from your studies um, that when firms engage in collusion, they form uh, illegal agreements, um, informal agreements, where they work together as one organization. They work together um, uh, to fix prices, to restrict output within the industry. And therefore, the cartel almost acts like a virtual monopoly. They are separate organizations, but they behave and they take on the behavior of that of a uh, monopoly. So we say this is the industry, the complex monopoly, or this is the cartel. OK, the diagram then to the right hand side is the individual firm from within inside the cartel. So I'll just title that. So the individual firm inside the cartel. Now, this is, you'll remember, similar to perfect competition, this is a 2 pn analysis, where the impact of now the cartel is going to influence the behavior of the individual firm. So it's similar to that of perfect competition. When we draw the diagram, you will see similarities. But I'm looking at how the impact of the industry affects that of the individual firm. So a complex uh, monopoly or a cartel, the diagram is very similar to that of a monopoly. The only thing I'm not going to do is draw the cost curve. So they face a downward sloping demand curve, D, which is equal to AR. Remember that a monopoly, mono in Greek means one, uh, it's a situation in which the firm possesses monopoly power, the ability to set prices. Any firm that has a downward sloping demand curve has the ability to set prices. We then have marginal revenue, which falls at twice the rate of uh, AR and cuts the X axis, so I have marginal revenue here. And I have our tick shaped marginal cost curve, in which marginal cost is equal to supply within the industry. That is all of the, um, that's all of the curves that I'm going to draw within this uh, one particular diagram. Um, I'm not interested really in costs, but I am interested in costs for the individual uh, firm, okay? So the monopolist or the cartel will pursue the objective of joint profit maximization. Therefore, they will set or they will fix prices where the cartel is making the objective of maximizing profits, where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost, where MR is equal to MC. So if I get my ruler and I go to where MR equals MC, okay, and I move up until I hit the demand curve, because this is where the prices will be set at in the cartel. Okay, so the cartel makes this informal agreement that they will fix prices at price level P1 and output Q1. They will restrict output at Q1. Now, what they're doing here is that they're setting prices and restricting output. They're setting higher prices and restricting output away from that of a competitive market. And to work out the price level for a competitive market, we go to where demand is equal to supply, which is here, and we work out our price and our quantity in the competitive market, okay, which is Q2 here, okay? So P2 would be the price if this was a competitive market. Instead, the individual firms a group of firms have formed a cartel, an illegal cartel, in which their main objective is to joint profit maximize by fixing prices. They fix prices at P1, which is higher than that of the socially optimum level of P2 and Q2. They are restricting output in the industry, 
reducing output from Q2, which is socially optimum level of output, at Q1. They're restricting output away from the socially optimum level of uh, output. So I'm going to write here that P2 and Q2 uh, is price and output in a competitive market. So is price and output in a competitive market. So in your uh, essays or in your answers, you would be talking about how the objectives of the cartel is to fix prices. Now, what we see here, and you'll see by fixing prices um, at P2, uh, up from P2, up to P1, it subsequently creates this area, and we see it in, in red, this area of a welfare loss within society. A welfare loss also sometimes referred to as a deadweight loss. Okay, so the cartel has made this informal illegal agreement to fix prices at P1. It therefore falls, the agreement is, is that once the cartel, which is a group of individual firms forming this complex monopoly, once they agree on the price of P1, all individual firms will agree to therefore set their prices also at P1. So to show that for the individual firm, we simply continue to get our ruler and you continue that dashed line across. And when we continue this, it's a dashed line for my individual firm's diagram. You could argue that subsequently, the firm or the individual firm within the cartel almost becomes a bit of a price taker. They take the price that is agreed upon by the cartel with the intention that they reduce uncertainties within the industry. By colluding, remember you forgo the art of competition. Firms seek to collude in order to forgo the harshness or the, the threat of competition and almost the aggressiveness of competition in those industries uh, as well, okay? So for our individual firm, and we draw my tick-shaped Marshall cost curve, MC equals supply, the individual supply curve for the firm. I'm also going to draw my ATC curve. And remember, as I always draw my ATC curve, I'm going to show the lowest point intersecting uh, MC. Okay, it's a U-shaped curve. Okay, now the firm has set the agreement that they would fix prices at P1 and they would restrict output at Q1. In order to restrict output, each firm will agree to all sell at P1, so they will not try and undercut each other's prices. They will not try and sell higher, because you remember from the kink demand curve, that doesn't make any sense. Um, and they will not try and undercut. Remember, the, the uh, agreement to collude was to try and reduce the uncertainties that exist within the industry in the uh, first place. So by engaging in collusion, they fix price, they restrict output. It now falls upon the individual firm to accept the fixed price agreement of P1, but also to agree to produce at a particular quota. Okay, so each firm will be set an individual quota. So I'm going to randomly select a uh, level of output here, um, just this one here. I'm going to call this Q3. Okay, and Q3 is the agreed quota for the individual firm within the cartel. I'm going to write that in. So Q3 is equal to the agreed quota. Uh, for the individual for the individual firm within the cartel. Okay. So each individual firm from inside the cartel has agreed that we will all set prices at P1. But in addition to that, we will also agree that each individual firm will agree to a set quota. They will, the one individual firm will agree to not produce any more than Q3 in the uh, cartel. So they agree, I will sell so many units, but I will not sell anything above Q3. I will agree to a set quota. And that's for the purposes of joint profit maximization. Now, to show the impact of uh, agreeing to this quota and agreeing the price. Remember that firms will engage in collusion in order for the idea of joint profit maximization. So to show the profit made by the firm, we go to Q3, we move up until that dashed line hits the ATC curve, and then I'm going to do another dashed line across. 
here. And this area, which I'm going to shade in in uh, yellow. So I'm going to highlight this in yellow. This is the area of joint supernormal profits for the individual firm. So when they engage in collusion, they almost share their uh, profits. So I'm going to label that as joint supernormal profits. And you will remember that supernormal profit is also known as abnormal profit. Uh, so joint supernormal profit for the individual firm. Okay. So to reduce the uncertainty within the industry, they're really aggressive competitive um, strategies that uh, oligopolists can uh, engage in. Things like non-price competition and uh, limit pricing. Uh, we also have predatory pricing as well. Remember that limit pricing is when the price is set so low that it stops new firms from entering the industry, whereas predatory pricing is a situation in which the price is set low to push out existing firms within the industry. So the firms agree in the cartel to fix prices of P1, and each firm agrees to a set quota of Q3. They all get their area of joint profit maximization. And this, if the cartel goes well, and if the agreements go well, it means that these individual firms get to maintain these profits in the long run. It's not a case of profits being very short-lived in oligopolies. Remember from the kink demand curve, um, firms are interdependent. The actions of one firm affect the actions of another firm. Um, so collusion reduces significantly that uncertainty within the industry. Now, one of the issues with collusion is that it works well in the short run. However, in the long run, there's always an incentive to compete. There's always the risk that the individual firm could potentially break the colluded agreement. Now, we know that collusion is illegal, and so therefore it's almost an unregulated industry. In terms of if collusion is happening, the CMA, the Competition and Markets Authority, is set up to try and work out if collusion is happening and trying to put a stop to it if they work out that collusion has actually taken place. Um, but the government isn't there to control uh, the work of uh, cartels. They're there to stop them. And so within the cartel, it's an informal, illegal agreement. Therefore, if somebody does decide to break the agreement, there's little all the other firms can do other than beat them at it. Uh, you know, play them at their own game. So the firm is making this area of super known profits, which is all well and good. However, in the long term, they may get a bit unsettled. They may think, well, in fact, I'm agreeing to this quota of Q3. What would happen if I broke the colluded agreement and started to produce slightly more than Q3? So if I do a dash line now going across, um, I'm going to do slightly more. So I'm going to show what happens if the firm does break the colluded agreement slightly. I'm going to call this my Q4. So again, a Q4, find where the dash line hits the ATC curve. Okay. And I'm going to shade this in, in blue. So this area here that I've now got in blue, this new area is the area of increased supernormal profits as a result of cheating. So increased supernormal profits as a result of cheating, okay? Breaking the colluded agreement. So the firm now has decided, look, I'm making the yellow area of supernormal profits. That's all well and good, but I could make more. So if I decide to increase my quota, uh, or if I deliberately go above the agreed quota of Q4, let's say, for example, that the, car the individual firm inside the cartel does agree to sell prices of P1, but they engage in non-price competition. They engage in better quality customer service. They engage in longer opening hours, for example, better layout of their store. They use promotions, for example. Um, they could potentially see themselves facing an increased demand for their goods. So therefore, they're saying, look, we have agreed to all sell at the one price. I'm doing that. But through non-price competition, my consumers demand my goods more than somebody else's. So even though they're agreeing to the fixed price, even at Q4, they're still selling at P1. But the firm is producing more goods and services because there's a greater demand possibly for them as a result of possible things like um, non-price competition. So in the long term, if the firm breaks the included agreement and increases their output beyond the quota, 
they make both the yellow and the blue area. Therefore, they increase their areas of supernormal profits. They're still restricting output within the industry, within the cartel. Other members of the cartel may not like the fact that they have gone above the agreed limit of Q3, and they might also try and do the same. And that's where cartels will break down in the long run. So in the short run, cartels are good for the individual firm because it reduces uncertainty. It means that prices is fixed. There's no longer uh, price instability. There's no longer a fear or a threat that prices will decrease because all firms within the cartel have agreed on the set price limit. They do make joint profits. All firms have an equal share of the profits made by the overall cartel. That's all well and good, but in the long run, there is always that fear or that risk that some firms may then decide, you know what, I've had enough of joint profit maximization. I want to make more. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go against the collusive agreement and I'm going to increase my quota, okay? Um, so hopefully that you find that, uh, that uh, revision video useful and helping you to understand that there is more diagrams to oligopoly than just the kink demand curve. The kink demand curve would justify why a firm would want to engage in collusion. And this diagram simply shows the impact of price fixing and the impact of joint profits and quotas within a uh, cartel. Okay.